Hello, I'm Mark Kepler with Purdue University Extension Service, and we're out here this, this day, on a beautiful day, taking a look at some beef animals. Fulton County Fair is an opportunity for us to see a lot of animals get exhibited, and so today we're going to talk a little bit about what we're looking for in the beef animals, and I got with me my intern for the summer, Alyssa Kuhn. Alyssa is a Purdue University student, and she's been working with us. Alyssa, tell a little bit about your background as far as beef production goes and 4-H, uh, too. Um, I was a 10-year 4-H member, and I showed beef cattle for 10 years also. We, I come from a small farm that has a Simmental herd, which is what you're looking at behind us. Yeah. Um, Been on 4-H for how many years? 10 you, years. You were in for 10 mm -hmm. years, you're out now out of it. Yes. So we're going to take a look at the, the, this animal. And what I'm trying to put together today is the fact there's the show aspect of animals and what that means to the industry of the beef cattle industry. So you mentioned the word Semmental. What yes. is that? Semmental is a breed of beef cattle. Okay, and there are a lot of other kind of breeds right. of beef cattle. Everybody's heard of Angus. Mm -hmm. They promote Angus quite a bit, right. and there's a tremendous amount of information about Angus also. Uh, have you ever done anything other than Simmentals in your program? Um, sh not at this farm. I, we have Simmentals and Sim Solutions, which are crosses between Simmentals and something else. Okay, so. so those are the kind of breeds. So when we go to the fair, let's start with that. Mm -hmm. There will be different shows. There will be the Angus show, there will be the Semmental show, there may be the Main Anjou show. Various different breeds will show. There will right. be crossbreds. That's mm -hmm. those breeds combined together. And then besides that, we're going to have other breeds that 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 will uh, be in there, a variety of different breeds. Right. And each breed has their own characteristics associated with them. Each breed was brought up in a different part of the world, right. too, mm -hmm. is where they come from. So the animal standing behind us is a Simmental what? Heifer. Heifer. What is the difference between a heifer and a cow? Aren't they all cows? A heifer is a female that has not had a baby yet, and a cow has had a baby. Okay. So that little definition, what's a steer then? A steer is a castrated male. Okay, versus a bull. Which is that's not castrated. fully intact. And right. we don't show bulls because bulls get a little mean sometimes. Right. So we'll get into that aspect. So we're going to go back and we're going to take a look at this Simmental heifer. And mm -hmm. she will be looked at as a heifer, not a steer. And there's a little difference right. there, what we're going to look at. So if I was going to judge this animal, mm -hmm. if I was the judge, and we're, by the way, this is your sister Olivia back yes. here holding <laughs> this animal for us. So we'll introduce her uh, at this point. If I was to judge this animal, what would I be looking for as far as judging goes? Judging, you're looking for... Let's go over here and take a look. A lot of different things the body structure, soundness, um, ability to move, and it all comes back to what her ability will be to carry a calf once she gets to that point of her life. Okay, soundness means uh, feet and legs. Right. A lot of this goes into feet and legs. It's because we're gonna keep this cow potentially as a cow once it has its calves for 10, 12, 14 years or so. Right. In order to have that, we got to have this leg structure mm -hmm. that we need to keep this thing going. So tell us about the leg structure. What are we looking for in that leg structure? Um, one thing you're looking for is set to the hock. So back here, you don't want them to be too curved and you don't want them to be straight down like a post either. And the hock is? The hock is right here. Okay, Sorry. right in that area. And so you want that leg that's not straight like mm -hmm. a post, you want a little bit of curve. How about if I get a little bit further under, if I got a lot of curve to it? Um, you don't want too much curve either because then they're not walking properly and their joints are under a lot of pressure, so you don't want too much. So we curve. want this animal to walk to the back of the farm, graze, come up and get a drink. Its whole life will be walking, 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 and grazing and walking and going back and forth. Uh, maybe slipping on a little bit of ice, that uh, kind of stuff right. going on. That's why the feet and legs are really, really important. Mm -hmm. How about the front end? Is there anything we're looking for there? Um, front, you want them to be set fairly wide. You don't want her to be too close together. And okay. you want them to be pretty straight. You don't want her to be bowed out or anything. Okay, now as I look at that hoof, we got a hoof that's slightly like this. If mm -hmm. it was more like this, what would end up happening to that animal? Um, that's not a good thing. Okay. So as it gets older, what it'll, would get end? Worse. it'll get worse and worse. Right. And instead of having those dew claws, those little things sticking out the back, 
up off the ground, they'll be hitting the ground. Mm -hmm. And so really we got, think about that. That don't feel too comfortable, right. I don't think at all. Uh, you mentioned the width. What's the width tell me between the, the feet? Um, a wider chest floor, which would be up here. Okay. And that means that they have a bigger bone structure, big, bigger body structure in general, which the bigger the better when it comes to being a female cow. Um, Okay, so the, that width that, that width that we're looking at of the animal in general tells us that there's a tremendous amount of meat right. in that animal. Well, how about uh, up and down here? Anything we're looking at that way? Um, from there, you want them to have a good depth of heart, which is from the top down to here. You want them to have a, as big a body capacity as possible, which means you want good rib shape around. Uh, you also want them to have a good length of body. You don't want them to be too short and tight together. So Alyssa, we've got a side view of this animal now. And so from the side, what are the things we're looking at? Uh, how about the depth of the, the, the length? What, what do we need to have on this animal? Um, you want her to have a level top line, which what? says that she has good muscle abilities to hold everything together. Um, you want her to, I don't know what else you're looking for. We want to have that length that's in there right. that we're talking about with that too. And and that loin eye, that, that's that loin that's in there. Mm -hmm. The bigger, the better right. in, in those situations. And so, uh, in other words, we're in the business of producing beef and we're in the business of producing meat. And so that'll end up having that, that in there. So that's where we want to have. So um, we got the length, we got the width. Uh, we want our fat. No. Okay, how do not. we tell that fat if it's something is really fat? Maybe too fat. If something is really fat, you won't be able to see any of these bones back here. Okay. You don't want them protruding too much, but you don't want them to be completely hidden either because okay. that means that they're too fat. Okay, so we got that. Um, another indicator of fat sometimes, let's go to the front end of this mm -hmm. animal and let's walk around here. Um, and you'll look at also an area in here that will show you if an animal's too fat too. Right. Um, in the brisket and dewlap area, if there's too much fat, it'll be very loose and it won't hold towards her very much. Okay. All right. So that's what we're looking at. We don't want it fat. We don't want too much of that on there, but we want a good, stout, meaty animal. Right. Now, your sister's standing here beating this animal with a stick. What's the idea of this, this woman beating this animal with a stick? What's she doing here? Well, she's actually not beating the animal with a stick. Um, she's scratching her lightly underneath in her brisket area and on, on her stomach, and it helps calm her down and gives her, it's like petting a dog, basically. Okay. All right, well, let's talk about the show aspect of this whole thing. Okay. So with the fair coming up, people are going to be showing. So tell me, what have you been doing to this animal from a show standpoint uh, as we look into this uh, uh, coming up to the fair? Um, from a show standpoint, we have been washing all of the show animals at once a day approximately to keep their hair clean and also promotes good hair growth, which is something that you want in a show animal. And so when I go to sell an animal, they want lots of hair on it. Right. Okay, show an well, animal. A when I go animal, yes. show an animal, they want to do that. Why mm -hmm. do I? I mean, hair is no value whatsoever. Right. What's so great about it as far as show goes? Um, hair can it makes them look fuller, and it in general just makes them look nicer overall if they have good a good fluffy coat. Okay. And um, we fit their legs to make them look as big as possible. Oh. So the more hair you have, the better that is. So we want bigger bones down right. in that leg. So mm -hmm. a lot of hair down there makes it look, look like bigger. we have a bigger bone. And not too many judges go down there and grab the hind leg, do right. they? No, that's not a good thing to do. Because uh, that's their defense mechanism. Right. You'll get whacked. We don't want to do that. So she's got a, uh, she's, well, if we're going to show this animal, let's, sh let me know what is the best way to show it. What do I need to be doing to show this animal? Um, to show this animal, you need to start by having her legs set up correctly, which... Is this correct? Yes, this okay. is correct. Okay, so front legs are square? Yep, front legs you want square, and the back legs you want offset just a little bit with the side closest to the showman forward just a little bit. Okay, all right. How about uh, that's what the, uh, and and how about the head and the halter and all that to part of it? Um, you also want to keep their head up. Okay, she's got it up really good yep. right now. Mm -hmm. And it helps extend their neck out, makes them look nicer, and make sure that their top line stays level. 
Mm -hmm. and make sure they stay calm is another big one. Okay, and that's what we're doing with the stick. What else, mm -hmm. what's that stick used for besides scratching? I haven't, what else do you use that stick for? Um, okay. You can also use it to help set their feet a little bit. As you can see here, she'll so use she'll it to pull it forward just a little right bit. Grab right behind that, bring it up a little mm -hmm. bit. There you go, good. Now how about if I wanted to move that leg back, what would I do? You could push on it instead of pulling on it just a little bit. There you go. <laughs> like okay. that. All right. So that's what that stick is used for right. in that aspect. A halter. That's a nice halter you yes. got there. Uh, for a show animal, you want to use a show halter. Normally when they're in the barn, you'll have a rope halter on them, but a leather show halter makes them look nicer and it flows better because the color is the same as their hair. And so it doesn't, it's not flashy. And um, so it just makes them look nicer basically. Okay. So I think we've covered the heifer here a little bit. Right. Let's just switch gears and just imagine that this is a steer and okay. not a heifer. What would be something different that I'd be looking for as a steer versus a heifer? And a steer versus a heifer, the one of the main differences that you'll be looking for is um, thicker and more muscling because they're going to be going for meat and you're not going to be keeping them for breeding purposes. So you want as much meat on them as possible, so thicker and more defined muscling. How about the feet and legs? Is that as important? Is I'm sure it's somewhat important, yes. but is it not major? Um, it's still just as important because you need a steer that's able to walk across the feedlot and get on the trailer and off the trailer. And so having good feet and legs will allow him to do that and carry all the weight that he's gaining. Okay, so those are the aspects. So if this was a steer, the bigger muscle, the heavier, the thicker it is, that's what we're after is the muscle in the animal. Correct. That's what we'd be looking for uh, in this animal. And, that, and that's very, very good. Now, the one difference between a heifer and a steer is if I got a big, heavy, muscled, thick, heifer here, mm -hmm. then she may have trouble having calves. Right. And so I want muscle, but I don't want hordes of muscle right. around that. But then I would like to have her have a calf that has some muscle. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, we can get to animals that are too muscled and then she'd have a difficult time giving birth to that animal. Right. And so that's another aspect with a female. We want to know her ability to give birth to an animal. Uh, looking at her, you can kind of judge that a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right. So these are the things we want. We want animals that are growthy. We want animals that are thick and, and really done uh, very, very well. There's things you can't tell on the show circuit. There's things that you don't even know when they're out there. Uh, and that is how long it took that animal to grow to this point. And with our modern genetics today, we've been able to get our animals to really grow uh, in a v larger in a very short period of time. When was this animal born? February. Of last year? Yes. Okay, and this is July. Right. So, uh, did you weigh it at the fair? No. Okay, you didn't weigh it. Do you know how much it weighs? 1,100 uh, pounds maybe? 11, Around 1,100 100. pounds or so. So, from February of last year to July of this year, it's gained to be 1,100 pounds. And you're not feeding it to get fat. Right. Uh, if it was a steer, you'd be feeding it a lot heavier mm -hmm. and it would do a lot better. And in that time period, it may gain, uh, get to 1,400 pounds. So there's a tremendous amount of difference in how we do these different animals. Let's switch gears again. Okay. Let's just say this was a dairy animal. Dairy show, totally different show, totally different animals. Completely. What would be, what would be looking for here on the dairy animal? Um, in a dairy female, you're definitely not looking for the muscling that you have in a beef animal. You want them to be putting their energy into making milk, so you'll see more of their bones. You'll, they won't have all of the meat on them that a beef animal does. How do we judge the udders then on those animals? On those animals, you want them to have a snugly attached udder that has a good holding capacity. The older they get, you don't want their udder to fall apart and hang off of them a lot. Um, so really one of the things you have to watch on dairy is you're looking at a heifer who doesn't have an udder. Right. And you also then will judge cows who do have udders. Mm -hmm. And a tremendous amount of the judging on dairy is based upon that udder. Right. Which means with a young animal, you don't have a lot to go on there, mm -hmm. do you? Uh, so you really look at structural things again right. uh, on those animals. Feet and legs, uh, we don't want them fat. Uh, we want them looking feminine. That's right. one of the things they talk about with dairy animals. They want them to look feminine. Mm -hmm. And it's that older animal, that cow, when we take a look at the udder and, and see what's going on with that. Right. So what are some other things you can think of that you'll look at as judging a dairy animal 
Anything else in there? Um, in a dairy animal, your rib structure and capacity is also very important. You want them to have lots of spring of rib. Um, and also, uh, you don't want them to be tight ribbed. You want them to have a lot of space between each rib to give okay. them more holding capacity. Stretched out. Right. And in the long run, a, a dairy, um, a Holstein, again, mm -hmm. we have different breeds, but a Holstein is a bigger animal right. than what a Simmental or an Angus mm -hmm. is. And so eventually they will have a, a, a bigger sized animal, and so there will be a lot more width between those ribs right. for those different animals. Okay. So those are the things we're looking at in these different animals as we come up to the show. And so when people sit out there in the stand and they have an opportunity to visit the different shows that are going on, um, I just want to give you a chance to see what the judge is talking about. Really good judges, and we have some really good judges that come along from time to time. They can talk these shows, and if you, go up to the, if you get an opportunity to come to the fair, listen to the terminology, listen to the words, right. uh, listen how they use different things and what they're looking for. They will explain a lot of different things in these things. Mm -hmm. and I, I, I think it's, uh, I think judging of livestock can be a very interesting show. That's probably why our biggest population at the fair for a show is the beef cattle show right. that comes along there. And they get an opportunity to see a lot of animals and how they work. Anything else? We could look, so. we've missed out on this. Okay. Very good. Lisa Kuhn, Mark Kepler, Purdue Extension Service, Fulton County. Thanks for being with us and come to the fair or if you get an opportunity or any other fair and take a look at these animals. And these are the things that we're looking for.